זהו, בוקר טוב לכולם, אנחנו רוצים להתחיל. בוקר טוב. דוב, פליס סיד נקסט טו מיכה בלאק. גיא, תנא מוב צ'ירס אנימור. בוקר טוב לכולם, אנחנו רוצים להתחיל עכשיו. Cover your faces, please, all of you, your mouth, your nose. Bokker tov lekulam. Kolom kol niyatkhil ba niyomar shet atfila meod meod yafa ayom. We are live streaming now. Might be some parents joining us for this special event. I'm still waiting. Cover your nose. I'm not going to stop before you cover your noses. טוב, בוקר טוב לכולם. סליחה, הרב מצטערת שחיכית. קודם כל אני אומר בוקר טוב לאימא של חנה מוריה מכיתה א', אבא של חנה מוריה מכיתה א'. תודה רבה שהגעתם אלינו בארץ ישראל. הרב זוקר כבר אמר לפני כן שאנחנו הולכים לשמוע היום הרצאה מאוד מיוחדת. ואני בטוחה שכולכם מאוד מאוד תצאו מכאן היום מחוזקים ותבינו כמה הכוח של להיות יהודי הוא גדול. זה לא פשוט להיות יהודי לפעמים. מאוד קל להיות יהודי בטינק, מאוד קל להיות יהודי באנגלווד, מאוד קל להיות יהודי בארץ ישראל. השבוע היה קצת קשה, אבל קל לנו. לפעמים בכלל לא קל. אנחנו תכף נשמע סיפור חיים על המלחמה להיות יהודי. אז כל יהודי, אב יהודי שיושבים כאן בחדר הזה עכשיו, תפתחו את האוזניים, תפתחו את הלב ותהיו בשקט. תודה רבה. אני מדבר אנגלית, נכון? כן. תודה. חנוכה is coming, and uh, me and my wife, קאטי, arrived to America, also the best way to celebrate חנוכה is in Eretz Israel, for the miracle happened just there. in Eretz Yisrael. So the special occasion that we still came to be with you is uh, <coughs> because of our daughter, Hannah Moria, and specifically, Roni, our granddaughter that became Bat Mitzvah. So I, I use the opportunity to greet Roni and uh, tell her, Mazal Tov, Roni. She, שתגדלי לשמחת אבא ואימא, סבא וסבתות, ולשמחת עם ישראל. Now, when I came here, Hannah Mori asked me to talk to you, and I somehow agreed. And I thought, what I'll tell you about. You know, I have a lot of stories. I have... several books written about that. I will uh, start with the miracles, right? What do you think of when you look at uh, Hanukkah lights? I think about miracles. There are eight lights, eight candles, and each of it symbolizes a specific miracle. Look again. During Hanukkah time, when you will light the candles, and try to imagine what symbolizes each small candle in your life and the life of Am Yisrael. And certainly, we say, you, know, you remember our blessing, our bracha, we say, Shasa nisim avoteinu, that produced miracles to our always be amim ahem that time bezman azeh and as well this time the miracles are happening since then up to now right this, this small miracle that we were able to 
The miracles that we were able to come from Eretz Yisrael is far away and COVID and all the problems, but still it's a miracle for us that we were staying with our family and enjoying it. It's a small miracle. Was a big miracle? See, people say, Rabbi Mendelevich, Harav Mendelevich. I look at myself, I can't believe that it is me. For I remember myself as a child in Russia, nobody would call me Rabbi Mendelevich. Rabbi Mendelevich means somebody that is uh, read and knowledgeable in Talmud, in Aloha. That time as a child of your age, and even younger than that, I could never imagine that I will become a rabbi. For I was assimilated. You know what means assimilation? Ignorant of anything. Nobody would tell me a, a perk of Tilim. Nobody would tell me a story from Chumash. I didn't know anything. Like a goyim. Like non-Jews. For there was no Jewish schools. No Jewish education. Everything was illegal. So when you think about the situation of people in Russia at that time, it means that you couldn't be, couldn't be a Jew. For a Jew is strong with his Torah, right? If you know Torah, you read Torah, you think Torah, then you are Jewish. Everybody is Jewish. You are born from a Jewish mother, but it doesn't keep too long, too much time, but you, when, if you don't know Torah and you don't keep mitzvahs. So it was my situation. I had almost no chance to become a rabbi. I had no chance to be Jewish at all. You know what means mixed marriages? You meet a not, not a Jewish uh, girl or not a Jewish uh, boy, you marry. The Am Israel is lost in you. So it what happened with the Russian Jewry. Many, many years ago, the majority of Russian Jews got assimilated. And it could happen with me as well. So when I light the first candle, I think about this kind of miracle, that I not only would remain a Jew, but even became stronger and became finally a rabbi. You know? Again, imagine a small boy, assimilated, ignorant of anything, and all of a sudden, it's Yosef Mendelevich, the rabbi Yosef Mendelevich. It's a miracle by itself. So just look at me and imagine this man himself symbolized the miracle of Amish Royal, the survival of Amish Royal. For, from the time from Hanukkah and before the Hanukkah, there were hardship and there were situations that we had no expectation to continue to be. The God of Israel promised us that we will be big and strong and multiply, but there were situations like Holocaust, you know, that people would say, that's all. Never, never um, Am Israel will exist anymore. And it does exist. And we do have our strong country. It's a miracle. It's a second miracle that I imagine when I look at uh, the candles. The miracle of Am Israel, that in spite of all whatever the, our goyim and enemies since Hanukkah and before that tried to harm, we are Am Israel high. We are still alive. It's the biggest miracle that you can think of. Understand what I am talking about? The miracle that there is Am Yisrael. It's a miracle by itself. And not simply Am Yisrael. Am Yisrael that loves Eretz Yisrael. Love Rebona Shiloh the God of Israel. True to it. Thousands and thousands of years passed by and we still are truthful Trustful to Ribbona Shilolam. It's the second miracle. Now I will tell you how from a small Russian boy I became Rabbi Mindalevich. It's a miracle, right? You see a Russian boy and uh, I'm, now I'm going to teach you something not that pleasant, but it is very important. In everybody's life happens all kind of uh, misfortune. You don't succeed, you fall, you, you, you feel bad. It happens. The question is what you are doing from your problems. You can say, okay, 
I, I am losing. I lost. Everything is lost. In the same situation, you can say, in spite of it, we shall overcome. And it is what we say, it's not the developments influence us. We influence the developments. It depends on us. Our right decision will change everything. Again, there are bitter times in everybody's lives. And I wish you never experienced the kind of the bitter experiences I had. But it, if it comes, it is again on you to decide. Any disaster, any problem, it depends on you and certainly on Ribbon Shalom. So it happened many, many years ago, again, as a child of 10. Who is 10 now? Okay, I, by the way, I had to mention my second loves, be, beloved uh, do, uh, granddaughter, Yala. Here is the Yala. <laughs> and I have uh, two more granddaughters over here in the place. And believe me, we have in Eretz Israel much more grandchildren, girls and boys. Anyway, I was a child of 10. And it was a bitter time for me. For my father was arrested by the Goyim, by the Russians. He was in jail. And my mo mother felt bad about that. Really problem, you know. Your father is arrested. And maybe it is shameful, you know, that your father is a prisoner. How you can come to the school, to the high school, everybody would say, his father is a criminal, he's in a prison. And then it was the time of our trial, of the trial of uh, my father. We come to the court. Imagine a big structure of the court, of the Russian court. We are not permitted to enter this structure, this building. We had to stay outside. My mother and us, three, two sisters and me. We were trembling, trembling and uh, thinking, what will happen? What will be the verdict? And then I felt that I can do something for my father to help him. How a child of age 10 help, can help his father? I don't know. But I feel I have to help my father. So I start telling something like that. Please, please help my father out from the jail. Please, you, I ask you, Raise my father, and I promise you, I'll be a good boy. I will obey. I will behave. What it, was it? It was my first prayer. Understand? Nobody taught me. You are, every day you are praying. You know, your father, your grandfather praying is obvious. It's routine. In my case, just the opposite. I never saw anybody praying. And all of a sudden, another miracle, the third one, happened to me that in spite of almost no Jewish education, my Jewish soul opened the God. I did know that there is somebody that you can ask for help. Not from textbook, and not from the prayer book, and not from the school. My Jewish soul, and it is in everybody's soul, in your soul. You know, some, somebody would say, everybody has to, to pray. It's obvious. It's a, like mitzvah is an obligation. It's true, but not altogether true. The real truth is that our Jewish soul would like to, to daven. It needs to daven. It asks us, go on daven. And it is what I, I felt and I understood. Like, you know, when Rebona Shel Oilem told, uh, you know who is Rebona Shel Oilem? The God, the God of Israel. When he told Abraham Avinu, what would he, what the first uh, commandment that Abraham Avinu got from uh, the Rebona Shel Oilem? Lech Lecha, right? But it is, you know, strange. Imagine Abraham Avinu all of a sudden is hearing something, is telling him, Lech Lecha, go. Who is telling him me? No. He asked himself, 
who is telling, maybe he, he is not uh, obliged to obey. Something telling him to go. I don't, I don't listen. The miracle is that Moshe Rab, uh, Abraham Avinu heard the voice from heaven, Lech Lecha, and he accepted it. And he immediately obeyed. For his Jewish soul told him, that is true. The God is to talking to you. He is ordering you. And it, it happened with me, this kind of miracle. He told me, Davin, ask, pray, it will help. And it helped. So again, my third miracle is that I was able to listen to the voice of uh, the God, of the ruler of the Lord, of uh, Amisro and the whole, the whole universal. Imagine what a miracle happened to me. Now coming back, the parents will ask, what the man told you? What kind of physical abuse, hijacking? No. He told you about the miracle happened, happens, and it happened for him, with him. You saw, you witnessed a man that heard the Rabboni Shalom asking him to pray, and he prayed, and it helped. Finally, my father got released. And you imagine, but when he was released from the jail, he was a break, broken man. You know, everything was lost. My mother passed away. Again, another experience. And now, coming back for a while, for whatever I told you before, it was a hard experience. The father is in prison. But it was positive for me? Somehow, yes. For I discovered the God. You know? As we say in our prayer in Yom Kippur, Zdonot Nasot Schoyot, big bad things can be turned to be good. It depends on you, on your decision. Understand? It, it is important to know that, God forbid, never it would happen to us, all kinds of experiences and hardships, but when it happens, we have to decide what to do with that. To give up, to get lost, or just the opposite. To decide, I will do my best to overcome, and it will be your success. It will be your achievement. So, you know, I wish my mother never die, and I wish my father would never be arrested, but it happened, you know. It doesn't depend on me. The question is, what you do with that? And it happened to me that I did the proper thing. And it's how, when I got older, I met boys like me. For again, all of us were assimilated, ignorant, and only some of us were eager to find out what does it mean that you are Jewish. Everybody, everybody knows that you are Jewish? How you know that, that you are Jewish? The father told you. <laughs> but uh, I did know that I am Jewish. Also, believe me, I was afraid being Jewish. I was ashamed being Jewish. How? For it's better to be a Russian. Russian is a, you know, a normal, regular. A Jew is strange. He is Jewish. He is different. People start hating him. So, it's a, another another uh, miracle that happened to me that instead of being ashamed being a Jewish I became proud being Jewish are you proud being Jewish be proud being Jewish be proud be belong to our beautiful outstanding nation also somebody can yell at us and uh, and uh, wish us and uh, and uh, and curse us we are proud we are we are we are proud it's the biggest privilege in my life that I was born a Jew. Also, there are Arabs and all kinds of enemies that try to destroy us. I am not afraid. For it's a privilege, you know. Imagine that maybe it would happen that I would mean, wouldn't be born as a Jew. How bad, how bitter. But I am a Jew. So it happened that with this feeling, I, I felt that I'm looking around and I found friends like me, young boys of like age 16 or more that like me were not anymore afraid being Jewish 
but just the opposite, proud being Jewish. That's very important. To be proud, to be strong, to know it's the right thing, it's the benefit that we are Jewish, never giving up. And then we felt that uh, we are a minority. Now, the majority of uh, our Jewish nation there in Russia were ashamed of being Jewish. And they try to mix marry, to, to get a Goish wife and a Goish husband, forget being Jewish. So we have to help them. How we can help them? To educate, to teach them, to establish underground classes. Under, underground classes. To teach, to teach them you are Jewish. So again, it's very important. I feel good. I am well arranged. I am, a Jew, I, I am proud that I am Jewish. There are other people. I say it's their case. It's their business. It's their problem. In no way. We have to take care of everybody. Every Jew is important. Also, he is far away. He doesn't look Jewish. But he is part of our nation. It makes us pain to think that it, he's that far away. We have, as we say, to make care of him. It's a direct conclusion. The moment you feel Jewish, it means you have to take care on the fellow Jew. It is what we say, how you can love somebody, just say, I love you. Not true. It's not enough. Love means activity, to help, to take people from their distress, from their problems, and help them out to join our Israel. It's how we started underground classes. Again, I believe you expected me telling the stories of hijacking, and uh, as the op opposite, I'm telling something different. Are you disappointed? But it is the beginning. If it would be not this beginning, I would never think of hijacking an airplane. I started, my beginning was discovering the God. The second step was discovering friends. I'm Israel. The third step, to think about how I can help other Jews. Understand? It's important. To think all the time, not only about yourself, but just about all other. How we can help other Jews. You know that assimilation, mixed marriages here in America is something terrible. Do you know what percentage of mixed marriages are right now here in America? 80%. It means one, it means eight, one, eight zero. Eighty percent of people of age, say, 18, 20, got mixed, ma mixed married. Lost for Amish royal, it is a disaster. It's like a holocaust, something very bitter. So you are studying here, and I am telling my stories here just to equip you to be a soldiers to save those people assimilated. Understand? It's not that simply you have to study. It's important to know that the knowledge should be active. You know and you study to become an active soldiers to save our Israel. Israel. And now we come to Hanukkah. Hanukkah meant just it. You know, certainly we celebrate Hanukkah and we light in candles of Hanukkah and it's a, a joyful thing. You know, my time we would eat latkes on Hanukkah. You know what's latkes? Yeah. yeah. In Israel they eat sufganiyot. I don't like sufganiyot. I, I like latkes. So. But it's not enough, you know. <laughs> Hanukkah is not latkes. Hanukkah is even not a symbol. It's a reality. That the Jews there, the Hasmonaim, took care of other Jews. There was a small group of courageous people that were not afraid. For the majority, it's always sitting back. It's, a, it's your reality. The majority of every nation is not active. They are not ready to struggle. So, and there are always a small group of people that are ready to fight, to fight back. Not, not to give the enemies to achieve their goal. They were Hasmonaim, and it was our group. You understand? Again, we can say, okay, you know, the people got assimilated. We are not interested anymore in them. Forget about them. 
It's one approach, and the different approach is we take care of them. They are our brother. They are son of from Yitzchak and Yaakov. We have to be with them. And it is how we establish underground classes to teach being uh, Jewish, to explain people that it is meaningful. It's not being only your, in our ID, in Russia was written a Jew. You know, one of the, of, of, of the paragraphs of our ID was nationality. So show you ID, ah, you Jewish. It's best that I am Jewish, but the other opposite. We had to teach people understand that to be a Jew is a responsibility, is a duty, is a mission. And now teaching and doing that, finally we came to understand that it's not enough. It will not help. For people, uh, you know, the majority, I told, 80% are still intermarried. We have small groups, small classes, how much can we save and prevent from assimilation? Maybe some couple of thousands. What about the millions? So what the way, the best way to save Amish Roll from assimilation? Say you, what would you suggest to do to save the whole American Jewry from assimilation? To take them out from America, to bring them to Eretz Israel. For an Eretz Israel in the state of Israel, everybody is Jewish. And there is no way to assimilate. Understand? It's the best decision to save American Jewry is just to bring them to Eretz Israel. And certainly, my time, the best way to save Russian Jewry was to let them go. But we are not permitted. I came to a certain office to ask for permission to leave in Soviet Russia. Why you need the permission to leave? You can buy a ticket and go. Not such thing during uh, the Russian government that time. You are not permitted to buy a ticket. You have to bring a certificate that tells, would say, you are permitted to buy a ticket. You ever heard of, about this? Who was in Israel? Some of you were already in Israel? Yeah. You, are, you got a special permission from American government? No, nobody needs it. It's crazy, you know. Why they should permit me? I'm going to Israel. I go to Europe, whatever. Nobody, I, I, I don't need anybody's permission. But in my case, it was different. I need a special permission. I, I was aware that no permission would be given. And just the opposite. The moment you approach and ask for permission, they would say, ah, you are willing to leave our Russia motherland. You are going to Israel. Are you not trustful to Russia? You are not loyal. If, a pen, if somebody is not loyal, it means he's an enemy. You are an enemy. So people were afraid to declare that they are willing to go to Israel. What it would mean that they declare that they are enemies of the Russian nation. But I was enough courageous to go and declare and demand, let me go. In a way, told the officer, you are not permitted to leave. For you are our slave, as I told you. You have to work here and build our Russian motherland. And you will die here, and never, never would you permit it to go to Earth Israel. You remember who told it some 3,000 years ago? 300 and 500, 2,000, 3,000 and 500 years ago? It was... Power of Mitzrayim, you heard? Power of Mitzrayim, Moshe Rabbeinu ba le paro, ba lo, let my people go. So what Paro told him? In a way, you are all slaves. You better build Egypt, pyramids, you, you saw the pyramids, build the pyramids and you will die there. Nobody will help, permit you to go out. So, it's the kind of, way of, of the answer that I got. Moshe Rabbeinu, what, what Moshe Rabbeinu did? He felt that everything is lost. Nothing will help. The power doesn't agree to let the Jews go. And then what, it, what happened later on? Thank you. Who, who, who will tell me what happened when uh, the power, yeah, go. A template, right. 
Ezer Marcos. If Pharaoh of Mitzrayim wouldn't go, like to let the Jews uh, go, we have to, to, to beat him, to produce blows, one another, until uh, the Pharaoh of Mitzrayim understood. Who produced the strikes, the blows? Rebona Shalom. Kibiyat Chazaka Otsiyan Hashem Be Mitzrayim. Never, never the Goyim would permit us go liberately towards Israel. We need this strong arm of him that will take us out in spite of uh, all the opposition of uh, the kings of the Goyim. And it was our case. The moment the officer in this office told me, in no way you will be permitted to leave Russia, you better stay here in Russia and build our country and you will die there. So I would, I had to obey, right? He is strong. His uh, authorities, who I am, a simple Jew. But that time I was already a member of underground Jewish movement. And I told, in no way, we have to fight. We shall become the strong arm, Yad Arichta, Zruanetu Ya, of the Kadosh Baruch Hu. And it, another miracle came. I would say it is the fourth miracle, the fourth scandal, that it turned out that among our groups, we had a group in our native place, and we had groups studying Hebrew and teaching Hebrew all over Russia, illegally, clandestine, unpermitted. Everybody of us could be arrested just for teaching Hebrew and studying Hebrew. But we are not afraid. Why? For we loved Eretz Israel. We loved Hebrew. You know, Hebrew sounds better than English. Do you agree that Hebrew sounds better than English? So finally, to go to Eretz Israel and speak Hebrew instead of speaking English. It's why our desire, I, I, our desire, and it is how we establish underground clandestine group illegal to teach Hebrew. And you know how I taught Hebrew? I got a small text box, book, book and I learned by myself Hebrew. It, it reflects the mention of the will. If somebody is willing hardly in loving something, he can do it. Even without teaching. You have, I know you have beautiful Hebrew teachers, like my, my uh, daughter Hannah Moria, but I had no teachers. And I still learned it by myself. Believe me, my Hebrew is much more better than English. Why? I, I learned it by myself. If you love something really, you can do it yourself. Anyway, and then we got in one of our groups, a member of our underground group studying Hebrew, a former pilot in Russian Air Forces. So imagine what he would suggest to, uh, to hijack an airplane. Easy, you know, it's simple, it's obvious, you know. If you have one of the members of our clandestine organization, a former pilot, certainly he will suggest to hijack an airplane. But you understood why we had to hijack it and not simply buy a ticket, for we are not permitted to buy a ticket. It was illegal. So now we had to work out a scheme how to hijack an airplane. It's easy, you know, to go and the, the benefit is that we had our pilot. So we don't need uh, to uh, compulse their pilot. He would take us over the border. For he can cheat. We don't understand in the maps. He would say, oh, we are going over the border. And instead, he would go in a different direction. So really, we needed our pilot. And Mr. Dimshitz, the name of the pilot is Major Dimshitz. Do you have somebody called Dimshitz? No, it's a Jewish name, a Jewish uh, second name, Dimshit. So he told, I checked all the maps and all, all uh, the timetables. There is a certain flight inside Soviet Russia that if we buy tickets on a regular flight, we can later on change the, the course of the flight and go over the border. And he explained to us in short details how it could, could be done. He told, see, again, to begin with, why we were permitted 
to buy tickets. I told you only now that uh, no tickets will be sold. It's something laughable that I'm telling you, but you, all the time you are laughing and cheating. What's, what's that? You know, you disturb me. You disturb me. You better leave uh, the auditorium for you disturb me, really. You know, whatever I am telling you are laughing. It's laughable what I am telling you. Anyway, so we worked out this scheme to buy tickets on a regular flight in Soviet Soviet Russia. And our pilot, our commander, told us that uh, uh, this specific flight will have a stop in a kind of uh, uh, forest for uh, tourists. And as far as it's only for tourists, no security would be there. Eh? Nobody would be checked. We could bring weapon on the board of the airplane, and it, when it would stop in between, we could uh, just uh, ask the pilots to leave uh, the airplane, and if uh, certainly they wouldn't agree, Russian pilots wouldn't agree. They had weapon. They could shot at us, but we, have, we had weapon as well. And then we, we shall do it forcibly trying not to harm them in any way, not to spill blood, for it is not good for army soil. Imagine if it would be announced that uh, Jew, Jews tried to escape to Israel very well, but they harmed the pilot, it's bad. So we decided we shall treat this Russian pilot very accurately, not to touch him. You know, for we are the majority, we both I told you before that it was a small airplane with some 12 passengers. All the members, all the passengers were members of our uh, fighting group. So no passenger were in danger. And then 12 of us would simply uh, overcome uh, these two pilots there on the board of, of, of the Russian government, take them outside the, and leave them for a while in the forest, not harming them. And then Mr. Dimshit would uh, take the guide and bring us over the border and over another country, and we shall land. Is there is a northern country called Sweden, and call upon world jury, help us out from Russian slavery, to have an interview, and call upon you, your parents, your grandparents, and people in Israel to help us out from the slavery. So it was, uh, it was a scheme. And we understood again that uh, we may be arrested for always CIA, FBI, and in Russia is KGB, police are smarter than us. We are amateurs, we don't know how to do that. Certainly they may follow us and watch us and they may arrest us, but what is important is that it will be something strong it will, be, it will be something dramatic that everybody would know worldwide that there are 10 Jewish boys arrested just because we are not permitted to live through Israel. And maybe, who knows, we expected that then the world jury will come up and demand from the Russians, as Moshe Rabbeinu asked, let my people go. It may work, it may not. So when we came, to the airport having legal tickets so, so far, for it was the tickets for a flight inside Soviet Russia. We uh, start stepping towards uh, this airplane. I was very excited. Imagine, I had the privilege to fight for, the, for open the gates for other Jews. What a privilege, you know. Again, take care of yourself and take care of others. So, like a soldier, I told whatever will happen, but finally it will became public that there were a group of Jews that were enough courageous to sacrifice their lives. So when we came to the, uh, uh, to the plane, close, some paratroopers jumped out and arrested us on the spot, put hand, handcuffs and brought us to interrogation. Immediately there on the spot in the airport, I was told that uh, because of my intention to run away, 
They told you try to harm state security and you expect death penalty. Too bad, right? Too bad. But it is what I expected. So when I was in prison, in a jail, under interrogation, I told to myself again, I'm uh, in, a better, in, in a bad condition. I may, be put, I may be put to death, executed. But I am proud that I tried and made this effort to help my nation. And maybe somehow it will become public and uh, uh, the world jury will help us out from the slavery. And it happened. It's another miracle. So understand, sometimes you are in a, uh, you are in a danger, we were in a prison, and it's bad, you know. But it helped other people go out. You know, there is a big mitzvah of Pidyon Shvuim, to help other Jewish prisoners out from prison. Sometimes you have to pay money to get them from uh, the prison. You have to be a wealthy man. Or you collect money, there is a certain prisoner in a jail, you collect money how to, somehow to buy the freedom of your brother. We brought freedom to hundreds of thousands of Jews without money. For we were not alone. Again, a Jew alone is very important. What is important really to feel that we all together, united, and it helped our nation out. And now I believe I have some t more time to go. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, and now imagine me under interrogation and the guards told me, the, the, the officers that were involved in questioning, they told me, give up or otherwise, otherwise we shall shut you. Give up, obey. So what to do? I was in my cell, in a basement room, down, down there, and I started thinking, what I can do? To cooperate or not to cooperate? There was no other way. And then, again, I heard the voice of the Bona Shalom telling me, the right approach is, be a good Jew. Keep mitzvahs. Try to study Torah. And it will help you out from the prison. And it happened. Also for me, keeping Shabbos and trying to educate other Jews in the jail, I was many times, many, many times punished for that. But finally, after 11 years of imprisonment, the doors got open and I was sent directly out from Soviet Russia to Israel. It's another miracle. See how much miracles happened in my life. And then I met my wife, and we married, and we got uh, the beautiful, uh, the beautiful Mora Chana Moria, and it's another miracle. I'm Israel High. If you are able to go to through all the experiences, as you know, Abraham Avinu went to how much experiences Abraham Avinu had? Ten. I had as well ten experiences. So when I overcome all the experiences. Finally, I came to Israel, and they checked my physical conditions, and they told, okay, also, you spent 11 years in prison, you fit to be a soldier in IDF. What a privilege to be a soldier and fight for the freedom of my nation. So, still, some, light, some candles are still uh, left. I mentioned maybe some four or five, three more. What kind of miracles? It will happen. It will happen that you finally will become grown people, go to Israel, establish your families, and Am Israel will develop, develop and strong and trustful to Ribbon Shalom. It is the kind of miracles we expect, and it depends on us. Thank you. כולם עומדים בבקשה. כל יהודי ויהודייה שהיו פה היום ומרגישים שהם יהודים עכשיו בבקשה לעמוד. הרב וידו בבקשה.
אפשר, אפשר קצת לשמוח, אנחנו יהודים. קדימה. 